Okay, so it's recording on both, but we're going to try something different. We're going we're live on Twitch right now. We just want to talk about like what's going on just in general, just going on like with the military, with the army, with like current events and like the issues going on in Tennessee. Um I think being the big issue that the army is tied in to kind of like the same situations that the Tennessee thing is going on. Like you can see how people are trying to be shut down and quieted basically so that people don't have a way of speaking or a way of um, talking about the issues, I guess you could say, because you can notice that the representatives from Tennessee is two young black dudes. And these dudes are like eloquent as fuck. Apologize for the cursing, but it's just like you can tell these two guys are like motivated. They know what they're talking about. Um, and they're there to represent the people that they are, the, the constituents, as basically they were saying. So it's interesting to see how the rest of the house was reacting to it because they had something that was being voiced. So in the military, you have issues like that that happen also because sometimes you have what you could say is like toxic leadership. With toxic leadership, you have people that are in those situations, in those positions that are above you, that no matter what you say, it, it just gets thrown out to the wind or you get casted out or you get blackballed, basically, which in the military, of course, is no such thing. But uh, the way they, they, they showcase it and the way that it's like it's happening all across the country, too. So it's like you, you see how it happens in that manner where it's difficult for people to see the fact that you have the personification of people just being outright just blasted out or just disregarded or disrespected. So it's like it's difficult to see in those cases, like, why is it that some people don't want to stay in the military? You can see why. It was like if you have something that you have to say or something that you want to get across and it's always being put down or it's always being disregarded or, yeah, we'll get to it later. It, it starts taking an effect on people because people just don't want to deal with the nonsense anymore. Uh, I tried to I, I I put that out before I put it out on on TikTok. I, and I had I had people say it is just like a lot of people don't want to be in the military now because of covid. Not not saying that covid was the, the cause, but it was kind of the cause for a lot of the retention going down the army isn't gonna say that the army kicked out a whole bunch of people because they didn't want to get the vaccine now all of a sudden the vaccine is not necessary or what if you caught covid you're good to go so it's like the the differential and the differences that got put into those situations is a is a big thing like you got rid of people because they didn't want to get the vaccine but all of a sudden now it's not necessary so you basically kicked out a whole bunch of people that didn't want to try something that was experimental, basically, in the case to be used or hadn't been ratified as FDA approved yet. But you wanted to force people to get it and to make them do it. So it comes into like the thing is just like, look, there, there was a voice there. There was voices there saying we don't want to do this. Nobody fought for them. Nobody said anything for them. It was just basically, hey, either you do it or you're you going to get kicked out. So people got kicked out. So people took it easy to get out. The other thing being um, just with COVID itself, like you had a ton of people just not want to deal with the bullshit. Like I said earlier, it, it's it's stuff that you would do like you do all the stuff every morning. You you wake up in the morning, early in the morning. You do formation. You do PT. You either squad, platoon or, or company PT, you do a brigade run, you do a brigade formation, you do all these things. Uh, you, you have to cut the grass, you have to um, pull weeds out, you have to go check the vehicles, do this, do that. Like some of the stuff is necessary. Some of the stuff is essential. Some of the stuff is day-to-day -day tasks that has to be done and has to be completed. You know, if you have a mission that you have to complete, you have to do those checks to get, make sure everything is good to go so that you're prepared for said mission. But then a lot of the stuff that happens, you notice that it wasn't necessary. A lot of the stuff is just extra that people just want to be extra about. Like keeping soldiers later than 5 o'clock or 1700 as military time would 
call it. Or if you're in the European side, that's how they do. They do the 24 hour clock. So it's it's a different thing. But you keeping people later than they should be kept just because you want to keep them there. Some people got families. Some don't. But then there's a discrepancy between having kids and not having kids. So because you have kids, you got a bit more leeway at times than if you don't have kids, you shit out of luck. But at the same time, it's like you're doing so much stuff and so much extraness that was done that while COVID happened, it just became non-existent. You weren't doing all the training. You weren't doing all the missions. You weren't working out every bonus for PT. You couldn't have formations. You couldn't have all that stuff. And the army still kept going. There were still missions being done. There was still training that was still happening. And the army kept on going without all the extra stuff. People weren't upset. People, you didn't hear anything about people being upset during COVID. Yeah, it is kind of bothersome when you're basically locked onto a base. Like, you can't leave base. You you got shut down the base. You got certain states and stuff that didn't really care for that. Uh, certain places, they just kept on doing what they were doing with no issue. Like, they would just leave or go to wherever they had to. I don't want to wear a mask, this, this, and that. We had to wear a mask. We couldn't go off base. Then you couldn't congregate with a certain amount of people. I was just like, we lived in a whole barracks building. So imagine living in a college dorm room for those people that, you know, went to college away. And they have to experience that. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, you can't congregate with the people in your building. I was like, hold on. So I, so a person that lives in a house can congregate with the people within their house. No issue. We couldn't congregate with the people that lived in our own building because it was too many people. But we share the same facilities, share the same supply room, same laundry room, same cleaning closets and all that stuff. So it's just like same common rooms. And we weren't supposed to associate with people like it's kind of it was kind of nonsense. It took some time for that to change. And, and then it's just continues with stuff that people just continue doing. Then you got out of that situation and then you went back to formations. People were doing PT on their own, like physical training. They were working out on their own. Yeah, some people gained weight. I ain't going to lie. I gained a couple of extra pounds. I wasn't working out as much, but I could still perform at the level I had to. I could still pass the, the PT test or even the ACFT once they introduced it. I could still pass that with flying colors without even having to work out. So it was more like you put all these restrictions on people and people started noticing that it's just like some of the people in charge of people were just doing it as a method to be in charge. It was a method of being in control of you, of like basically being that you're, you're not being a leader. You wanted to be a dictator. And people got tired of it because it's just like you're telling me I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't leave my room. I, I got to stay indoors. Like we had a curfew in Germany that kept us nine o'clock. You couldn't be outside. Like there was one incident that one of my uh, one of the soldiers I worked with, he had to go take care of his daughter. But since he was out after nine o'clock, they were trying to get him in trouble because he was trying to take care of his daughter because he was past the curfew hour of COVID because COVID only attacked during the nighttime during the military. Daytime, they didn't give a shit about it. But nighttime, boy, it's like the boogeyman. Nine o'clock hit till what, like five in the morning? You couldn't be outside because COVID was just like lurking behind the streets, behind the buildings, just waiting for you and shit. Um, And it was just ridiculous to the point of that. Me, I just got tired of it because it's just like you don't have a voice sometimes. Sometimes you speak for people. You speak to try to get things done and it goes unheard. It was like in the military, you can't. You, I can't put a bill like these Tennessee representatives did. They just trying to talk to the people and be with the people. They got voted for the people and they want to speak for the people when it comes to gun laws and gun restrictions and stuff like that. But it gets to the point where those people weren't allowed to talk. And if you listen to them, those, those they're two smart representatives. But you can just tell that they ruffle feathers because of the way they speak. They speak the truth. They speak fact. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like when you speak fact in the military. In the military, they, they just want everybody to be a yes, yes man, yes man, yes. It was just like, and it comes to a point where 
you dumb down the the force by just having nothing but yes people, yes people that follow orders. Because the thing is, is the orders that are always coming out are not always correct. They're not always the smartest. They're not always the most thought out. Some people just say shit just to say shit. And it was like, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Like we like to call it the good idea fairy. You come up with some random shit and somebody's just like, you know what? We'll run with that. I was like, did y'all plan this out? Did y'all think it through? Y'all just tell the soldiers do this shit. And the soldiers just look at you like, bro, why are we doing this? And I'm just like, I'm more confused than they are. And I'm supposed to be in the know to let them know what's going on. That's a problem because it's like you have a lot of people that are in the situation where it's like oh i can't no nah, I, I don't got the answer for you but you're just gonna do it my way because this is the way i was taught 10 years ago which is fucking out of date and you're gonna do it this way and you look at them like bro that is one of the most inefficient ways to conduct business or to get something done you work as a team but the thing is is you know you have their supervisors. I understand that role. I understand the ranks, the rank structure. It goes up. They tell you what to do. It goes down. But at the same time, sometimes you got to question the rank above you. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes you do. Because sometimes you know of a way that's better of going about something. And then they'll listen to it. Sometimes they listen to it. Sometimes they don't. I was in a situation where I came up with ideas and I had to make it or give it to one of my peers so that he can push the, the, the idea so that it would go through. Because me, I was looked at as a guy that didn't know my job, even though I knew my job. And I knew more than a lot of them did. But since I was the new guy, they were like, oh, you, you don't know what you're talking about. But then I would pass it to another, to one of my peers. He would pass that information along. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, this is the greatest idea. And I'm just like sitting back. At first, it would piss me off because it's like, I came up with this shit. But y'all didn't want to listen to me. But then I learned, I was like, you know what? F to the benefit of the rest of the soldiers in this company, I'm going to start giving him the information so he can push it because they're going to listen to him. And we were doing the shit we, I had planned in the first place anyway. But that's the thing is like it comes to the point where it's like certain things are just like ingrained in certain people and people are just tired of it. You have a lot of soldiers now that are getting out of the military. Why? Because dumb people, just fucking idiots. It's just like you can't even sugarcoat it or make it any better. It's just like really stupid people that do not fucking know what the fuck they're doing and you put them in charge. Like you got some company commanders. I'm sorry, but some company commanders don't know what the fuck they're doing. People, people, a lot of people in the military have potential. Some don't. Not everybody is supposed to be a leader in the military. And that's one thing I think they fucked up on with trying to promote everybody. Everybody is not a leader. You have the ability to be a leader. But the good leaders, you don't, everybody cannot be a good leader. Some people fail. Some people don't. Some people excel. Some people know how to deal with setbacks and it makes it, it propels them forward. Like I'm gonna tell you, take two steps forward, uh, two steps back to jump forward. It doesn't happen like that in the military. Some people are just like too dumbfounded and stuck in their ways that it has to be done their way or the highway. And soldiers don't comprehend that anymore. Soldiers are more intellectual now. They have more information. Um, that's why it's like you always see issues within the military now because of being able to speak up like we have what they call uh well, i can't even say we anymore because i ain't even in the military anymore but now i can speak on it because it's like they call it a census session you know how the states has the census where everybody says what they do what they do in the military is they'll have a census session with the commanders the company commanders has a sensing session which is supposed to be held every I believe it's the first 90 days with them, them taking over. Basically, the sensing session is them telling them. <laughs> sensing session is them telling them basically that you are being introduced to this company. This is what's going on within the company. This is what you want to do within the company. These are the issues that are going on within the company. But it's filled out by the soldiers within the company so it's the people within the company that do this it's the soldiers that are supposed to put 
information in there. But the thing is, is most of the time that information doesn't get put out by those higher ranking officials because they don't want that survey to be filled out. They don't want that information to be put out because then the thing is, is that incoming commander, he's brand new. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know the issues or the, the, the shortcomings that are going on. So basically, those higher ups don't want that information to be put into that. So some soldiers don't even know there was a sensing session that was supposed to be filled out. Some people don't even see that survey. Because the thing is, is you have some people that are toxic and you have some people that are ill-mannered and just like degenerates is the best way of putting it. I don't give a fuck at this point. That just should not be in charge. Those people will refuse to give that information so those soldiers don't get to fill that information out. But then again, also, soldiers never got explained how they were supposed to fill that sense of session out. Because the thing is, is what I told soldiers, like, hey, look, if y'all got a problem with me, make sure y'all spell my name right. Y'all got the name tape right here. Read it off and put what the issue is. But what I told y'all is, if y'all all have an issue with me, don't just make it one person saying that there's an issue. Collectively, as a group. Put it together and say, hey, I have an issue with Staff Song Cruz. He did this. He did that. He did that. And put it that way. The issue is that since they had so many little soldiers that had issues, a lot of the times the supposed issues came from the problem soldiers. Usually, I would say, I wouldn't say half the time. A bit more than half the time, those soldiers are actually great fucking soldiers. They just had shit ass fucking people in front of them or people to supervise them or lead them that made them shit soldiers. Because a lot of the times it's like you get a bad soldier. It's like some soldiers just want a clean slate. Like, yeah, hey, I was a knucklehead. I switched to a new company or I switched to a new location. I want to start fresh. Thing is, is if you're stuck in that company, they might keep you. Under that same umbrella, like, oh, you that shit bag. You, you that dude that did this. And they keep you under that. So there's, there's, like, you serve your punishment, but it doesn't do anything for it. It's like going to jail. You did your time. You're supposed to be good, right? You did your time. You serve your time. You're out. But you still consider, oh, you that criminal. How does that work? I was like, how is a person supposed to progress in that case if you just keep holding them back because of the fact that he messed up earlier? I was just like, if you give a person a bad rap, they had a bad rap and they've been doing good, but you don't give them any opportunities to show that he's better or to mainstream the fact that he can be better than other soldiers. Why is he going to stay in? I was just like, you put a negative cloud on somebody, that cloud is going to stay on them in the military. It's that stigma. Like the military doesn't like to talk about things like that because it's just like they want oh, they want to recruit. Oh, we'll give you forty thousand dollars, though. It was like the, the, the meme that the one guy was just like, hey, we'll pay you to do all these jobs. And he was like, which one? All of them. How much you going to pay me for one? <laughs> it was just like, what? And then people think about it. It's just like, like I said, look at COVID. COVID had a factor in it. You working all this shit, doing all this shit. What did you get for it? You ain't getting nothing for it. People in the military they didn't get nothing for it. They got more restrictions. They couldn't do this. People couldn't go home. You couldn't go home to see your family, see if your family was doing okay during COVID. You had to just call and hope, hey, somebody got sick. If they did get sick, you couldn't even go see them unless it was like an emergency that they were hospitalized. You couldn't go see your family if they were sick or not. So it's like things like that start adding up. They they start coming together and it's just like, you want me to keep on doing this for you, but sometimes you do the bare minimum for me. You have people that are in the military that have served. Shit, I got to 10 years and you were going to tell me that my signing bonus to, to re-up, which would have been to do another 10 years, I was going to get $6,000. But a person that's 18 years old, don't know anything about the military, you're going to give them $40,000? It's like a slap in the face. And that's what a lot of companies are doing nowadays also. It's just like, we'll pay the new hire more. But we won't pay the person that's been here that has the experience that is basically going to teach that new hire. We won't give them a raise. Okay. Then you want to come up with all this extra stuff that is just like, 
uh, NCOERs. People be like, oh, NCOERs tells you if you were great or not. It was just like a lot of the ass kissing that is done with NCOERs and OERs is beyond fucking reach. Soldiers don't fucking see that shit. You see that shit when you're a fucking NCO and they trying to rate you against other people. Was I the best? Fuck no. Was I better than a bunch of them? Fuck yeah. But that doesn't get reflected. What gets shown is, oh, you did this, you accomplished this, you accomplished that. But it doesn't get measured by the soldiers. It gets measured by somebody that doesn't pay attention to what the fuck you do, but takes all the glory and the glorification of what you do. Not saying that's all over the place. It does happen a lot, though. There's a lot of places where people are just like, I did all this work and I got this. I busted my ass for all of y'all and I get this. Like, this is the recognition I get or this is what I get. Now that I decide to, like, slow down and actually take care of myself, I, I'm, I'm the bad guy. Like, hold on. So you weren't doing any work this whole time. And now all of a sudden you have to do some work. Now you want to get all pissy. I've been doing work the whole fucking time. Haven't relaxed. Haven't taken a break. Did, like, a couple of jobs by myself that I wasn't even supposed to do by myself. And then I'm trying to relax and take it back because I'm burnt the fuck out. I'm dealing with depression. I'm dealing with anxiety because dealing with all this shit. And then I'm a piece of shit because I stopped working. And then you want people to stay in the military? People don't stay at jobs if they don't get treated well. The only difference in the military is, is that you're obligated because you're under contract. That's the thing about the military. You're under contract to do these things. So it's just like... It's like you're you're in the army to do this. You're under contract, and people don't people don't understand that. Like it's an eight year obligation. It was just like people be like, "Oh, but I heard so and so only did like three or, or four years and this stuff." Like, yeah, you could do three or four years, but when you sign up, you volunteer, you put your hand up, which I volunteer for. But I'm gonna mad. I needed the job. I needed to get some work in. I needed to make sure I could pay my bills and know that the company I worked for wasn't gonna lay me off. As you can see right now, the situation is a lot of layoffs here and there. Companies made a shitload of money, got bailed out during COVID, but now they're cutting jobs because they're like, oh, we got to pay these people again. People are actually coming to work. We're telling them we want them to come to work, but people don't want to come to work. I was doing the same job I was doing at home. Why well, got to be at the office? I could do the same job I was doing from home with my family, see my kids the whole time, take my kids and do all that. And I'm like, what's the what's the point of that? I was just there's there's no reason for me to stay in. Same thing in the military. There's no reason for me to stay in with all these restrictions when I see all of my friends on the outside doing well. Not saying all, but a majority of people that decide to get out, if they have a plan, like I said, planning is key, and that's the one thing I always say. Planning is key. If you planned it out and you have your ducks in a row. You just shooting them things down as you go and you get out. You have no issues. Like you see, like one of my one of a good a little brother of mine, basically, he basically got kicked out, and this man was stressed. And I just told him, bro, don't worry about it. You said your family got you with a job, bro. You're gonna work that job. You're gonna do good. And you're gonna be all right. You go. You did your time in the military. You had your fun. Shit went sour because of dumb people and stupid fucking people and lying, which happens all the time in the military. And he got kicked out. But all of a sudden now he making money. He's good. He living life. He got his wife here. He living. He making money. He's making almost three to four times more money than he did while he was in the military. Shit, I'm making almost the same money I am while I was in the military. I ain't doing nothing. I'm just talking to y'all right now. I'm just on the microphone. I'm streaming. I'm taking care of my kids. I'm taking care of the house. I get to see my kids. I get to take my kids to school. I get to walk them, go on bike rides, and I have to worry about somebody calling me because another grown-ass person decided to fucking get a DUI or do something stupid, and I got to fucking report and explain why he did that. You know what it is to try to tell somebody that you got to explain to somebody why another grown ass person did something like 
That shit is out of the question. Like you, who does that? Who who has to deal with that nowadays? Who has to deal with the fact that it's just like, hey, you fucked up. Not you yourself. Somebody else fucked up, and you gotta take the blame for it. Where in a civilian job has anybody done that? Where somebody else got in trouble for doing something wrong, and then because you're their supervisor, you gotta explain why they fucked it up. It was like sometimes, yeah, it is on you because of what you might have told them or you ordered them to do or stuff like that. But then when it's some situations like, hey, man, if a person decided to smoke weed, how the fuck does that have to do with me? What what, what was I supposed to do? Be with them fucking 100% of the time? So fuck my family and kids. I'm supposed to stay with this soldier the whole time, make sure he don't do nothing stupid. I got to make sure he don't drink and drive. I got to make sure he's drinking responsibly. No. I was just like, sometimes in the military, you do stuff like that, that it just disregards what people do. I was just like, you fail to account or take to account what the person does and hold them accountable. You pass the buck, as they like to say, to somebody else. Soldiers nowadays don't want to deal with that. Soldiers nowadays are just tired of that shit. It's just like, why am I going to keep dealing with something like I'm doing what I got to do? And they leaving. Or they get the glory. They get the awards. They get the mentions. And the soldiers now is just like, a lot of soldiers now is like they need that reinforcement. You need to reinforce the soldiers. You need to give them positive vibes. You need to tell them like, hey, you're doing a good job. You got to send them to this school. You got to try to send them to this school. If they motivated, you got to keep pushing them. Or at least show that you are pushing for them. A lot of leaders now don't do that. A lot of leaders, the, a lot of the senior leaders now are just fucking lazy. I'm not going to say all, oh, but a good fucking percentage are just lazy. A lot of them got their rank. They've been sitting on their ass and they just riding out the fucking wave. Biggest thing I say still is fucking that whole indefinite rule. People should not be like, if you're a staff sergeant, which is E6, and you get to a level of over 10 years now, the next time you re-enlist, you're going to your 20 years. Basically, you go to your retire. So basically, I'm allowed to stay in the military. I would have been able to stay for the next 10 years and stay as a staff sergeant. So I could have been a shitbag the rest of the way. Yeah, there would have been um, board proceedings, but unless for you, for me to get kicked out, I would have have to have been a true shitbag, which even then... Most situations, you get to certain locations and you see that those shit bags are the ones that progress. Because they get buddy-buddy with the person that's in charge of them, this, this, and that. They start kissing ass. They don't do shit, but they kiss ass. Their soldiers are fucking out of shape or they start getting in trouble. They, they don't counsel them. They don't, they don't make them show the potential or make them gain potential. But those are the ones that get promoted. Those are the ones that stay in the army. A lot of the times you see that the people that get out the army are the good ones. Are the people that, you know what, they know their potential was not met or wasn't pushed. They weren't challenged because it's just like, yeah, the army is simple. But when you do training or you give a person a job or you go do this and do that, people want to do that. People want to be, they, they want to feel like they are needed. They want to feel like they have that responsibility and you're giving them that responsibility. But the point of not giving them that responsibility or giving them the ability to progress is difficult. Like I seen one person, um, I think it was in the Air Force. In the Air Force, he was asking, oh, I want to do this. And they sent him. Yes, mind you, the Air Force is a smaller entity, smaller branch of the military. The Army is huge. But the thing is, is you have so many people that want to do so much stuff and you got so many people that hold them back. You got people, hey, I want to go special forces. Bro, if you want to go special forces, what do we need to get? What do we need to do to get you there? Oh, I want to spoke to this. All right, cool. Let me know what else you need me to hand out. If you need paperwork signed or we need to process it, let me know. We'll push it through. I was like, there's no reason you should hold anybody back from trying to progress, or trying to do anything in the army. The thing is, is the army don't see it that way. The army likes to push, like, the issue with burnout. You have one of the hardest workers, and what do you do? You reward them with more work. You don't give them incentives. You don't give them the 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 classes. You don't send them to this school. You don't send them to that school. You just give them more work. The guy that don't do shit is the one that you send to the classes. 
So now this person has been working their ass off and then they ask for a class. So they ask for fucking just to take leave or go somewhere and that'll get denied. Just like in the civilian world, when's the last time you put in for, hey, I wanna, I'm going to go on vacation? Yeah, well, you can't do that. But I'm telling you I'm going on vacation. It's not like a, it's not like I'm asking. It's like I'm telling you, hey, I'm not going to be here from here to here. And like that. In the military, you got to put in paperwork. You got to make sure your documentation is good, your, your pay is good, this, this, and that. And it's just like you put all these criteria for people to leave when they're lower enlisted. But then the high enlisted get to do whatever the fuck they want. So the thing is, is like the military has soured when it comes to holding the fucking standard. A lot of people say, bro, the amount of people I know that would just be like, oh, we hold the standard. We hold, bro, you don't hold shit. You pick and choose when you want to hold the fucking standard. And that's the fucking problem. If you straight across with everybody all the fucking time, people respect you in the fucking military. Whether you're a shit bag or not. If you're a shit bag and I know you're a shit bag and you always keep a shit bag attitude, then I already know that's who you are. I know how to deal with you. I know that certain ways of talking to you work and some don't. Some leaders don't know that. Some leaders just think it's a one be all for everybody. It's not how it is. You can't talk to males and females the same way. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you have to. But sometimes one soldier could be male or female, can be talked to in a more stern way, and it sinks into them. And sometimes you got to talk to them like a child. Then it sinks in. Sometimes you just got to actually pull them to the side and talk to them like an adult. And then it sinks in. It doesn't work the same for everybody. You got people from all facets of the fucking country. Shit, people from all over the world joining our military. And they didn't get brought up the same. Some are racist. Some are not. Some have never seen or met black people. Some have. Some have never met an Asian person. Never met a person from the Philippines. Never met a person from Vietnam. Stuff Like the amount of people that you meet that have never met a certain ethnic group or something is baffling. Especially in basic training. In basic training, you have people that will be from a little small town. They daddy grew up in and this, this and that. And they come here. I was like, oh, I never met this kind of person. What you mean? And then I'm from New York City. I, I met everybody. I got around everybody. I knew everybody. I've seen everybody. And these people will tell you, oh, I never met this kind of person. And then you think about it, it's just like, hold on, is this person racist? Or are they truly just not, don't know what the hell is going on? Or do they have a discriminatory manner against certain people just because they don't know who they are? A lot of people just scared and don't know. But then at the same time, it's just like, that's something you still deal with in the military. You deal with that with the... Representatives from Tennessee. These are two black men. And then it's funny because the lady was supposed to get kicked out. And she was like, oh, it was probably because of my skin. She's white. So that's why she said it's probably because of my skin that I didn't get expelled from the the Tennessee Congress. So it's like when it comes to stuff like that, you see that. And then you see in the statistics where minorities get a tougher uh, punishment when it comes to UCMJ, which is the Uniform Code of Military Justice, or basically like punishment, you get it. Minorities get it worse. That's an issue, but you can't prove that because the thing is, is the Army won't look into that. The Army won't look into certain situations. They'll just be like, hey, we'll leave that alone. Hey, we, we see it's happening, but we'll, we'll band-aid. People will stop talking about it and they'll forget about it. Same thing with gun control. Is it needed? Yeah, I think it's needed. To a certain extent. People should be able to buy guns. Shouldn't be a wrong with that. Thing is, is people should have to register their guns, though. That's it. Background checks, register the gun. That's it. Buy as many guns as you fucking want, but they all registered, and I know you're saying in the mind to be able to have that weapon. That's it. Besides that, it was like, I can't control, I can't control people... Using guns. You, you you will never be able to control people go- with a gun. It, it's not going to happen. In the military, you use it because, hey, you need to defend yourself in, in a situation or wherever you go to or you get deployed to. You're going to use your weapon. You might need to use your weapon. You might not. But there's rules of engagement. 
So there's guidelines as to when, how, and who, you know, to, to do so. But that's a restriction. Military just restricts people too much. And it's just like the times are getting more modern in the military. Like AI. AI is going to end up being incorporated. That's going to be another another talk I have because I asked Chat GPT like, "Hey, how do you how do you see the military being used with you integrated into it?" Interesting answer, but it's just the times are getting more modern, but the military is staying in the fucking sixties. They still have stuff that's happening like in the 60s, 70s era, like regulations. Like, bro, these regulations are so far behind our times. I was just like, people got cell phones now. You need to reach somebody, call them on their phone. Do they have to answer? No. But some people say they do. It's a phone. It's my personal phone. The army don't pay for it. I shouldn't be conducting any business over the phone. Somebody's going to have a problem with that. Somebody's going to agree. Somebody's going to disagree. But you didn't pay for my phone bill. The military don't pay. Now, if you have a military government phone, I understand. But if I'm using my cell phone that I'm paying for and you're trying to tell me what I have to do through through there, I don't have to answer you. And a lot of people will get upset at that. It was like, well, no, no. I was like, no, because I don't tell you how to use your money or the stuff you pay for. So it's like, hey, that's your car. Oh, we're going to use your car to drive this military thing here. What's the difference? It's a phone. It's the it's your car. I don't see what the big issue is. I don't I don't see I don't see a difference in in those two situations. But people will make it a situation. But then if it's a senior, but like, now nah, you ain't using my car. But you'll tell somebody else to use it like it it don't work like that. You got so many outdated stuff like what is it like CQ charge of quarters where people are sitting in a fucking building to make sure stupid shit doesn't happen. If you haven't checked, stupid shit still happens. Whether you got somebody posted or not, chances are stupid shit don't happen to that fucking effect when you don't have somebody posted. I lived in a building for the past what? two and a half years, almost three years, where I didn't have a charge of quarters. I didn't have somebody there that was on the phone, like, checking in, checking, making sure the building was good and this and that. We didn't have no issues. We didn't have no issues. You got the buildings that, yeah, you got, well, we were NTOs, so there was more responsibility in the in the building. But at the same time, NTOs could get wild, too. NCOs be having drinking parties, be partying and stuff like that. It's the same thing. It just it's not going to be any different. You don't have people in that building watching them. You have soldiers being watched. But then the thing is, is you say you set up cameras. So then why don't you just have the cameras? You have you should have one person at staff duty. That's the battalion. That's the, the higher level one. And he should be doing checks. Maybe put more people to do that so you can maintain and do more checks. But that's about it. People in the buildings, like some of them are adults. Some people need to be watched more, which I do understand it. But at the same time, it gets it's certain things are just getting outdated. Certain things like you can't put your hands in your pockets. Why, bro? It's cold. Why? Why can't I put my hands in my pockets? I was like, what? I forgot my gloves. I don't have my gloves, but I can't. I got to keep my hands out. Or do this. To keep them warm. Like, why? Oh, I can't wear this certain temperature or do this. Everybody got... Like, I understand the uniformity and all that when it's a uniform setting. But if it's like, hey, we're going to be over here, we're going to be over there. What's the issue? I got a beard now. And it's just like, what's the issue? It's just like, I have a beard. How, How does this make me less professional? How does having a beard make you less professional in the military? It, it doesn't. They want to tell you, oh, the pro mask, it, it won't fit. Or it's like, bullshit, I was chemical. That shit fit just fine. Most fucking people don't even fucking do chemical training. Which is what baffled me the most. Because it's like, before I got to the unit, I got to the last unit. It had been two and a half years since anybody did fucking 
chemical training. So your concern is because I have a beard. I can't put the mask on, which at some point I understand. It's just like if you were doing training all the time and stuff like that. Cool. But you're not. People don't do chemical training. The only time chemical training becomes an issue is when you hear Syria drop some fucking sarin gas on its people or Russia was playing around with this nonsense or China has this shit. That's the only time you hear about it. And then the, the company commander is like, hey, shit, uh, uh, came down that we need to do some more chemical training. Hey, man, throw this shit together. But we haven't done this shit the whole fucking year. And you expect people to learn how to protect themselves on one class? Because that's the only time you do it. It's that one class. So they go to the chamber and then 95% of the company don't even show up because either they find a profile that they can't make it or they find a reason not to be there. So it's like you don't even get the training anyway. The bullshit that gets like the pencil whipping that happens in the military is a whole nother ordeal. Also, it's just like you have people that will just pencil whip the shit out of the information that they're doing. Like training in some places is non-existent. And you want soldiers to be motivated. All you do is tell soldiers, say, clean up, go check the vehicle, stay late. Oh, take the shit from this connex, take it all out, inventory it, put it back in. But we did this shit last month. Nobody touched this shit. This shit is still locked. How is anything going to go missing? Now, unless you opening and changing shit around... But if you know the keys are signed in to a key log in a key inventory and that shit hasn't moved, why are we doing the same inventory again if shit is not moved? That's why soldiers get tired of the dumb shit. It's just like stupid shit that gets done. It's just like, hey, check the vehicle. Most people don't know how to check a fucking vehicle in the first place. They don't get taught the stuff. Like the teaching is what's missing in the military nowadays. And people don't understand that it's like you're not teaching people anymore. People are not learning anything. They're just being passed down information. May it be right or not. But they're not being taught anything. Everything is just like, oh, you should look it up. This, this, and that. Why can't you teach somebody? You're supposed to be a non-commissioned officer or a leader. You're supposed to be a mentor to people. So you should be teaching them something. They should be learning from you. You can't expect somebody that just got in to know everything that's going on with the military. And they just got fucking here. Like. Bro, make it make sense. You got people that have been in the military so long and these poor motherfuckers are lazy as shit. And then you see the soldiers doing it and then it's just like, mm. so he gets to do that, but I get in trouble when I do it. And it's like, what the fuck? And it's just like, that's that's a whole other thing. Like People don't understand. It's just like, how much shit gets pushed under the rug for the senior community compared to what happens with the junior community. What I mean seniors is like Sergeant First Class, um, Master Sergeants, First Sergeants, Sergeant Majors, and then everything below, Staff Sergeant and below, E6 and below, compared to E7 to E9, you see the discrepancies. And the thing is, is what people... I guess the army fails to realize is that this is all visible now. Before it wasn't as visible. Before people didn't have TikTok. Before people didn't have Facebook. Before people didn't have cell phones. So the information was not being put out the same way. Because the thing is, is you'll hear about something happening in your in your same duty station. And it'll be like on army what the fucks. And trust me, if you don't know what Army What The Fucks is, just pay attention to it and see the shit that you see on there. Some of the shit is just dumb. Some of the shit is just, like, reasonable. Some, A lot of the times they are trying to be helpful. Like, they put out messages for uh, fallen soldiers or soldiers that have passed that are going to have a memorial and they don't have anybody to go. So they put that out on the page to make sure people go and actually pay respects to a fellow service member if they're able to go. So the page does a lot, but you see the stupidity that happens in the military. You have people sweeping rain while it's raining. You got people cleaning vehicles in sandstorms. You got people just getting kicked out for not getting a COVID shot. But you got seniors that are being fucking pedophiles 
or you got seniors that are being sexual predators and nothing is happening to them. So then that causes even more problems because it's like the soldiers see it. You just showed that that senior was able to get away with something that he shouldn't have been able to get away with. And then you blame the soldiers or the soldiers do somewhat le or way less of an effect and they get hit with the hammer over the head with the punishment. So it's like you allow for the senior community to get to this point and allow this stupidity and allow this ignorance and allow this wrongdoing. But then if another person does it below, way lower rank, it's a bigger issue. So the thing is, is that's why I say it's like the standards are not the standards. Because the thing is, is you want to push the standards on the lower and listen, because it's like, oh, we got to make sure we, we got to make sure we make a sound and efficient way of telling them, hey, don't do this shit again. But let the seniors fucking do it and let them get away with it. Like I said, it's not that the army's bad in all aspects. But there's a good amount of it that is just like people need to do better. People aren't doing better. People aren't getting better. A lot of the people that are in charge are the people that are lazy, that are doing the wrongdoings, and nothing is happening to them. They talk to people in a disrespectful manner when you're supposed to be a professional. It was like nobody wants to be spoken to in a disrespectful manner. But because somebody has rank, some soldiers just think, oh, I'm supposed to just eat it. I'm sorry. I'm not going to eat it. Why the fuck am I going to let another grown man just bitch at me or complain at me or curse at me just because he feels like it. That's not how this shit works. If the person fucked up, then yes, curse him the fuck out. You got to have tough skin. I'm sorry. You're you going to have to deal with it. But if you were just in a foul mood, like your wife pissed you off or you didn't get what you wanted or something, and you're going to take it out on somebody else, that's 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 immature. But the amount of times that shit happens, that has an effect on people. Because the thing is, is people don't realize like it's visible stuff is visible all across now like it's not the same anymore like i was saying you got tiktok you got you got fucking um facebook you got twitter you got all this stuff that exposes and shows the stuff and then the other big thing was like even the 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 sexual assault shit that happened that 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 i think even took it to another fucking extreme with just the fact that it was just like shit wasn't being reported Shit wasn't being said. The army itself said that nothing was going on in the Guillen case. Nothing. They had no nothing. And then that shit got proven wrong. Did the army ever issue anything out saying anything? No. The army didn't say nothing. The army just kept it quiet. The army just kept it moving like, hey, bro, we fucked up, but we ain't gonna sh shit, let's just keep it on the low. We fucked up. And that's what the... the that that's what's going on. That's that that's what it is. It's just like the army be fucking up and they'll put a band-aid on it. They won't take care of people. They 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 try to come up with new shit, new incentives, and it's just like, yeah, we'll give you this new incentives to sign up for a couple more years. It was just like, yo, people are tired of the bullshit. And it's just like if I'm dealing with bullshit constantly, you want me to just sign up because what y'all gonna give me an extra what six thousand dollars over what ten years? And I'm just supposed to say yes for another 10 years to deal with stuff that I can't get out of. So if I have people that are toxic ahead of me, I have to deal with that situation. Because I can ask to be moved, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen. I could say this person is toxic. This person is an issue. This person is a problem. I was like, well, you need to learn how to be more uh, respectful. Excuse me? I need to be respectful for a person that's being disrespectful to me or doesn't know their job the way they should and just uses their rank to basically intimidate people. I don't get intimidated by a person's rank. And I taught that by, I taught a lot of soldiers that. You respect the rank, but you don't get intimidated by it. Because the thing is, is not everything that they say is correct. Not everything they do is correct. Not anything or everything they tell you to do is correct. And that's something you need to be understanding. And that's the thing is, the soldiers understand that now. It's just like, a lot of people just want to come out their face because they got the rank and it's just, it doesn't work like that anymore. There's no discipline. Why? Because you don't show that discipline. That senior don't show that discipline that he's trying to enforce on the soldiers. So basically, 
the soldiers are basically taught like by the drill sergeants from the beginning. You respect that rank. You listen to that rank. That rank is supposed to teach you and show you how to be a fucking be all you can be. Remember that shit? They brought that shit back. So be all you can be. But then the thing is, is everything that you can be is toxic. Unrelated to what you're doing, don't know what the fuck you're doing. Like, how is that progressive towards anybody? How does that allow anybody to progress? People ain't going to join the army because of that. Retention is going to suck because of that. It's going to get worse. Why? Because more people are realizing that they don't need the military. You got so much stuff you can do outside of the military. You did your benefits. You can, you shit. Veteran affairs, collect the disability check. A lot of people get fucked up so bad with the military that they don't realize it. That's why my channel on YouTube is going to be a lot of information for veterans to get their veteran claims done or get assistance with it or get information that they need to progress. Why? Because I love to teach people. I'm not going to say I was the best NCO. I wasn't the worst NCO. But I know I have a lot of people and a lot of soldiers that still contact me now, even though I know I'm out just for questions or guidance. And I'm glad with that. I'm happy with that. I, anybody that needs any issues or has any issues, you always have the ability to reach out to me. My number is the same. If you have my number, my number is the same. It has not changed. It's just teaching people, educating people, not being toxic towards people, treating people like adults, treating them like a grown man or a grown woman. It gets you farther. It, it, it allows you to grow the force, like I said. It allows you to acknowledge people. To, it allows you to mentor people. And people don't fight you as much. People people always want to say, oh, it's the fucking soldiers nowadays. Yeah, the soldiers nowadays are different. But if you train them and teach them why it is you're doing it, these soldiers will be better than you will. Or be better than you could ever be. They can be all they can be. If you teach them how to. But the thing is, is you don't know how to teach and you just stuck in your ways. You just looking out for yourself. And I know I'm talking to certain individuals right now that if they hear this or they watch this, they know who the fuck I'm talking about. I was just like, nah, they ain't going to admit it. They probably just going to go to a fucking soldier and try to screw them over the next time they get the chance anyway. Why are we getting out? Oh, you a shit bag because you're getting out. Oh, you can't deal with the shit. No, nah, man, I'm just not stupid. I was just like, you deal with the shit because you ain't got nothing better to do and you ain't got another way to better yourself in life. A lot of these soldiers nowadays realize that they can do better. They can motivate themselves. They can create. They can do this. There's more advances and more advantages out in the world by getting out because of the opportunities that the military doesn't afford them. Well, the restrictions that the military puts on them. It's a, it's a case of you have to be better. But the army has to learn how to make you better or how to assist you in being better or teach you to be better and teach you how to take care of those that aren't making you better, which is where the army is failing. It's not taking care of those people that need the help. It's taking care of the people that don't need the help. It's taking care of those toxic people that are still in charge that are coming up with these stupid fucking rules or come up with these stupid ideas or come up with these restrictions that try to just make people's lives miserable because they're miserable. It was just like, let it go. That's it. Some of y'all shouldn't be in the positions that you are. But, hey, the army feels, oh, you did enough time. You did this, did that. We should put you in there. Some people are just toxic and they shouldn't be in there. Some people get caught for fraternization, which is basically them fooling around and messing around with a lower enlisted soldier when they're married, which is adultery too. But what happens to that senior? He'll just get moved to another location. What happens to that junior soldier? He'll lose his rank and then he'll get looked down upon because of that. But that senior keep that rank, they'll just get moved somewhere else. Or they're allowed to retire. But you'll kick out a regular soldier. Which baffled me for the 10 years I was in the military. Just the fact that it was just like. The person that has been in longer gets less of a punishment. When they knew better. But the lower enlisted person gets a higher punishment. When they didn't know as much. Make it make sense. But then again. Common sense is an issue in the military. 
common sense isn't agreed upon or liked in the military. So I understand that point also. It just gets to the point where it's just like, what are you going to do? Sign up again for a couple of years? Nah. I'll enjoy the life on the outside. I'll enjoy the freedom I have to do what I want. I'll enjoy the freedom of not having somebody tell me what I have to do, where I have to be, or I have to match your uniform, this and that. I could just be myself and be a regular person without being restricted. So we'll end this episode on that note. And we will talk about the military on the next episode. And we are going to go into why we should join the military. So I understand all this, all this talk now. Like I said, Tennessee is bringing shit to out into the world and making people see in the nation like this is what's going on. You can be heard, but they're trying to shut you down. In the military, you can be heard. You need to speak up, but you need to speak up as a group. Get the change you want so that the military can become better. People do want to join. And we will talk about that in the next episode. The good things about joining the military. So it'll be the good about joining the military and how we can fix retention. So we'll leave it at that. Just Cruz signing out for this podcast episode. uh, And we will catch you on the next one. Peace.